Howdy, Joe. How are you doing today? Oh, boy. I don't know what to do. My doctor told me my kidneys are getting dangerously weak, and I'm approaching something called ESRD. Joe, this is a serious medical condition, and I'm here to help. Phew. Oh, thanks, Pam. There's so much to learn. I, I was feeling overwhelmed. I'm glad you're here with me. Let's go see Dr. Dialysis. Welcome, Joe. How are you feeling? To be honest, Doc, I'm pretty nervous about this ESRD diagnosis. I don't even know what ESRD is. Well, Joe, I have reviewed your medical records and see that the combined function of both your kidneys is down to 15%. Unfortunately, this means you are heading towards ESRD, and we will need to get you prepared for kidney replacement therapy. So, Doctor, what does ESRD mean? ESRD stands for end-stage renal disease, and it means that the kidney's ability to clean the blood is less than 10%, and the patient will need kidney replacement treatment, or they will eventually die from kidney failure. You see, Joe, we found that patients with severely weakened kidneys who are better educated about the treatment options available to them overall do much better. They are better prepared and more easily transition on to kidney replacement treatment. In general, Joe, a patient with ESRD has four options. The first is called hemodialysis, which is often referred to as blood-based dialysis. The second option is called peritoneal dialysis, which patients often call belly dialysis. I know the third option is kidney transplant, but what's the fourth? The fourth option, which some patients decide is right for them, Joe, is to not receive any kidney replacement therapy. So, Dr. Dialysis, can you give us an overview of the other kidney replacement options available to Joe? First, let's discuss hemodialysis, which involves circulating a patient's blood through a small tube, and the blood is then pumped through a dialysis filter. The filter has over a thousand tiny hollow fibers where the person's blood comes into contact with a clean dialysis solution. The toxins that the normal kidney pees out in the urine is now being picked up by the dialysis solution. The clean blood is then returned back to the patient's body. How does the blood get in and out of the body? Great question, Joe. What we do is surgically create a connection between an artery and vein under the skin and the arm, which we often refer to as a fistula. Ideally, we do this several months in advance of starting hemodialysis, as the fistula needs time to get strong, so it will be ready to be used when it's time to start someone on hemodialysis. A functioning fistula allows us to place two needles in the arm to circulate a small amount of blood out of the body and through the hemodialysis circuit, and then pump the clean blood back into the body. As part of this process of getting prepared for kidney replacement treatment, we'll meet with the surgeon who can better explain what is involved with placing the fistula. How often would I have to have my blood cleaned with this hemodialysis? Patients on in-center hemodialysis need to come to the dialysis center three times a week and be on the machine for typically four hours for each treatment. Dr. Dialysis, can we now switch our attention to the other type of dialysis, which is done at home, which we call peritoneal dialysis? You mean belly dialysis? Yes, belly dialysis, which we call peritoneal dialysis, involves placing a small tube in the peritoneal cavity. This is the space inside the body where the intestines are located. This small tube, which we call the peritoneal catheter, remains there and becomes the way in which to fill and drain fluid from the peritoneal cavity. Does this tube go into my intestines? No, no, Joe. The tube is placed by a surgeon into the cavity that holds the intestines. That's right. This cavity, called the peritoneal cavity, is lined with a blanket of tissue called the peritoneum, and the cavity can easily hold a large amount of fluid without any difficulty. During belly dialysis, we put about two liters of clean peritoneal dialysis solution into the peritoneal cavity via the catheter. This is called the fill. This fluid is allowed to sit for a period of time called the dwell time, 
During this dwell time, the peritoneal fluid picks up the toxins normally peed out in the urine. Then, the same catheter tube that allowed the fill is used again to drain the fluid. This exchange process is repeated as many times as prescribed by your doctor and is programmed into the peritoneal dialysis machine. That all sounds pretty complicated. Where would I perform these procedures? At the dialysis center? Actually, Joe, first there is a training period where the patient comes to the dialysis center during the day and is taught how to do the peritoneal dialysis. Only once both the patient and the dialysis nurse trainer feel that the patient is safe to do it themselves will we transition the patient to do it at home. The training period is typically less than two weeks and the patient is never really alone as there is always a staff person available. The belly dialysis needs to be done every day because it is not as efficient as the hemodialysis. For most patients, all of the exchanges happen while they are asleep and using an automated machine called the cycler. The patient connects themselves to the cycler at night prior to sleeping. The cycler is pre-programmed to automatically time the fill and drain while the patient is sleeping. Wow, belly dialysis and hemodialysis are pretty different. They are, Joe. Each one has its advantages and disadvantages, and that is why it's important for a patient who is heading toward ESRD to become educated about the treatment options so they, along with their medical team, can choose the one that is best for them. Later, Joe, we'll meet with the dialysis nurse educator, and she can go over each type of dialysis in more detail. I've also signed you up for our group classes, as many patients have found them to be very helpful by hearing questions and concerns that other people like themselves with ESRD have. What about the kidney transplant option? There's two potential sources for a transplant. The living-related kidney where a living family member donates a kidney. The other way in which a patient with ESRD can get a kidney transplant is from a person who is brain dead and donates their organs. We call this a cadaveric kidney. Unfortunately, Joe, the waiting time for a cadaveric kidney transplant is typically three to five years. What this means is that essentially all patients with advanced chronic kidney disease will be on dialysis prior to getting a transplant unless a healthy family member donates one of their kidneys to them. So how do I begin the transplant process? As part of the pre-transplant evaluation, you will be referred to a kidney transplant program to begin the initial steps. So Joe, we've gone over a lot of information here. We've done an overview of your various kidney replacement treatment options. Next step is to schedule a time for you to meet one-on-one -on -one with our dialysis nurse educator to get more in-depth information about these options. Any patient considering hemodialysis will need to meet with Dr. Fistula so they can better understand what is involved with placement of a fistula. And all patients who have kidney function less than 20% can be referred for initial kidney transplant evaluation. Thank you so much, Pam and Dr. Dialysis, for explaining things to me so I understand what my options are. I can see more clearly what lies ahead for me, and I'm ready to make the best of this situation. It's comforting to me to know that I have a team supporting me every step of the way on this journey.